information depth there is an information given by the geotechnical engineer of which i showed to you how you have to know how to interpret geotechnical reports so that you will not be misinterpreting information and you will not cause a very great damage to your structure and the people um, that are the occupants or that will be the occupant in the nearest uh, time frame right so we have some information that guarantee us that we would use a depth of 1.2 meters for the foundation depth right so and i'll be showing you why in the next video relating you with the soil report i got for this for this project in particular so that you can relate with, together with me all right so having done this we are good to go we can use okay then we can begin to relate with our import of course we know that we've done the import formally so we just have to find find it all right this is the first floor this represents the ground floor as you can see here the next one represents the first floor as you can see and this one represents the pent floor the last one represents the roof so i want to start with this ground floor so i'm going to take you down to the ground level so that we can have that done all right so because when we import our pictures or our floor plans or floor layouts rather was done to story one so we want to bring our import down to story zero and this is how we are going to have it you get back to your um external reference drawing then you want to show what story exactly you need those imports right so i need it on story zero now representing my foundation floor so that i can deal with that first then i move to other floors all right great now i have that already now on the foundation floor which is my story zero that's my that's going to be my ground floor right all right so i want to use um, a one two by two to five beams and other sizes of columns as i have applied my engineering judgment in the first attempt so if in the lines of my design some elements do not have enough capacity to bear the load imposed on them we we'll need to prefer some other um, solutions either to my arrangement or to the sizes of my structural element right but for now we want to start with this preliminary design which is a function of my engineering judgment all right so the first thing i need to do is to um just use my grid again and put my grid lines uh, fresh and i told you why i'm going to be doing that because of those guys um joining us as a beginner so that everybody can be on board together but i'll be applying the grids that i brought in from my general element because those are the ones that aligned with um what the architect had done so and um, that's going to be an information for you whenever you are doing your own design your there should be uniformity in your work with that of the um, architect do not go against the architecture you should complement the architecture rather all right so you don't want to do something against what had been given to you as the structural designer all right so um this is how i input my grid if i want to do it manually myself i mean like if i do not want to import the grid if you do if you want to know the faster way for of doing this you can check um also in the description of this present video how to import um structural element or how to import your drawing from autocad to product structure right so we have 4b all right so to be sure that your lines are straight like you can see that this one is already is not straight so you have to use keep using your control button so that your your lines can can be straight all right so i have 4b and uh, all right there's a duplicate here so we want to be sure what, what's happening 4b and 4 so it's not it's not two 4b's right i have four here all right i have four here yeah. 
okay so let's check the architecture and um, the general arrangement and see why we have 240 if there's any issue around that all right this is not um applicable so we can we can skip this in our design already except for this so we have to change the information on on that all right so let's look to it so this becomes 4a 4b another grid here that's 4a holds the control button so you can have a straight grid line all right so the next one also all right all right all right i don't know i'm trying as much as possible not to have a clash with the grid line because it's going to be a serious one if we do it's going to affect uh, our result so for the year then we have for a year all right for a Okay, so we have another three. We have two A also. Then we have two. We have one and one prime. Alright, you want to be sure that you're doing all things correctly because once you get it all wrong at the point, it affects every other thing. It affects every other thing. Alright, so we are done with vertical grids. And um, let's just go for the horizontal grid, and we'll be fine. So we have A1, so we have B. Then we have C. All right. All right. Then we have D. We're supposed to have D. Yeah. Then we have D2. Right. In the last one we have E. Okay. We have E for the last one. All right. So and that will be all for the grid lines. And as uh, you will do your own in your own attempt. But this is how it's been done in inputting your grid lines. Now, um, 